Today we're talking about loops, loops, loops. Previously, we saw that we could iterate through sequences using loops. Well, iteration allows us to actually run a block of statements repeatedly, kind of just like Doctor Strange when he- Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Dormammu, Dormammu, Dormammu. Now there are two kinds of loops. There's the for loop and there's the while loop. In this lesson, we'll be discussing both of them. The first type of loop that we're gonna discuss is known as a for loop. So a for loop allows us to iterate over a sequence. So this might be looping through each character of a string. For example, I might have some code that says for char in cat print char. And then at the very end, I'm going to print, you know, something that signifies I'm done with this loop. So I might say, okay, print done. All right, so now what's this gonna look like in our virtual computer world over here? So this is our virtual computer world. Okay, so we have some string here, cat. Okay, so I'm gonna represent that string as I did before with this little sequence of boxes. And so that stands for a letter C, then A, then T. Okay, so now what this is doing, so this is what I'm iterating over. What this loop is doing, it's saying, so I'm gonna come up with this variable char and let me use green to denote that. So in my virtual computer world, I now have a variable named char and I'm gonna go through each of the boxes in cat. What's the first box? It's the C. So at first char is equal to the C and let me just erase this red to make it very clear. And once I've you know set char to be that first box in cat, I go ahead and execute whatever is underneath that indented statement. So that's anything down here. And right now we only have one statement which is print char. So what we're doing here is right now, what is char? Well, char is C, right? So let me draw out, you know, what my output might be from here. And currently we want to print char. So, okay, we come here, char is equal to C. And so we print C. Now what happens? Okay, well, we've done everything under this loop right here. We've done every, we've done this whole block of statements that's indented. So what we actually are gonna do is go over to the next box. So I'm gonna take this char variable and just slide it over by one box. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. So now I'm gonna come down here and execute everything that's indented in this for loop which is print that whatever char is. And what is char? Well, we look over here at our virtual computer world and char is pointing to A. So I come down here into my output and I now write A because char is A. Okay, and then we slide this over one more time because we can. And so now char is T and we're gonna go ahead and execute everything here so that we're printing char, which is T. So we print a T. And then we try and we want to slide this char over one more. And then we realize, okay, there's nothing there. At this point, our computer says, okay, we, we can't go over one more. Hmm. Well, that means that now we're done with this for loop because we've iterated through everything that we can and there's nothing left to go through anymore which means that we're left with this final statement that's outside of the loop. So one thing to note is that how do we know what's in the loop, what's outside the loop? We just look at this white space here. So anything that's indented that's after these dots, that's inside of that for loop. So whenever we go through one by one, we execute everything there. If it's outside, if it's like the same uh, indentation as that original for, then that's outside the for loop and we execute that after we're done with the loop. So here, because this print done is the same indentation as for, 
Then after we're done with this loop, at the very end, we print done. Okay, so our output from this code should be C-A-T done. Now let's go over to the computer and try that out. Okay, so here I've typed for char in cat, print char, and then at the very end, we're gonna print done. So let's run this. And we get C-A-T done, just like how I just explained it. So let's go through a different example. We've looked at strings, but actually we can iterate through any sequence using a for loop. So we can iterate through lists, tuples, and even dictionary keys. Or, you know, we could also do the values and items, but that requires an extra step. We can also do iteration through sets. So let's look at a list. L is equal to some list, zero, one, two. Okay, and then I'm gonna say for val in L, let me put a little tail on that L to make it very clear that it's an L. Um, let's print that value. And then let's also print that value times two. Okay, and then at the very end, we're gonna print done again. Okay, so I'm going to put my virtual computer world up here, and then I'm gonna write my output down here. Okay, sorry, these are not great boxes, but that's okay. So first I have some list L, and I'm gonna set that to this like representation of the list that I came up with in the last class. Um, so here I have values 0, 1, and 2 in my list, right? So I'm coming up with a variable, val, and I'm pointing it towards the first item when I go into this for loop. So val, okay, that's equal to 0 right now. And I'm going to dive into the indented part of that for loop. So I'm going to print val, which is 0. Okay, then I'm going to print val times 2. Okay, well... What is val times two? Val is zero. So val times two, zero times two is zero. So I'm gonna output zero again. Now I'm done with this block. So I go and I scoot val over to the next item in my sequence. And now val is equal to one. We go into this indented part of the code again, and we're gonna print val, which is one. And then we're gonna print val times two, so one times two, that's two. Okay, so then we're going to scoot this over one more time till we get to two. Okay, and now we're gonna print val again, so that's two. And then we're going to print val times two, so two times two, that's four. And now we're gonna try to scoot this over one more time, but there's nothing over here, so we're, you know, Basically, this is telling us, all right, we are done with these lines. We're done with this for loop. And then we can move on to the very last statement, which is print done. So then we print done at the very end. So let's go and try that out. So let's set L equal to zero, one, and two. And then for each val in L, I'm going to print val and I'm going to print val times two. Now at the very end, I'm going to print done. Okay, so if I run this, then I get zero, zero, one, two, two, four, done, which is exactly what we just wrote down. So now let's go over while loops. So sometimes what we wanna do instead of iterating through a sequence is we wanna iterate through a block of code until a certain conditional statement is met. So until something becomes false. And so in the Dr. Strange case, it's until Dormammu could not tolerate with Dr. Strange anymore and decides to concede, then they finally break that loop. Never come back. Do it and I'll break the loop. So this is where something known as a while loop comes into play. So in a while loop, we continue looping while some condition is true. And then once that condition becomes false, 
then we break from that loop. All right, so let's do an example with some real code. So let's say that n is equal to three. Okay, so in my loop, I'm gonna say while n is greater than zero, I'm going to print n, and then I'm going to do a subtraction. So let's do n equals n minus one, okay? And then at the very end, I'm going to print go. All right, so what happens here? Let's draw out our virtual computer world, and then let's draw out our output. Basically, okay, let's start here. n is equal to three. Okay, so we have some variable n, and we set that equal to three. And now our condition is while n is greater than zero. So right now, what this is doing is it's checking, okay, what is n? n is three, is three greater than zero? Okay, well, this is true. So we're gonna go through our statements here. So we're gonna print n, which is three. And then what we're going to do is subtract one from n and set that back to n. So over here, n equals three. Okay, so what's three minus one? It's two, and we're gonna set that back to n. So instead of three, now n is two. So, okay, we come back up here and we check our condition again. So now n is equal to two. So we're checking two greater than zero. Well, that's true again. So we go into here and we print n, which is two. And then again, we do, okay, n equals n minus one. So n minus one is one because two minus one is one. And we're gonna set that as n. So let me just clean that up. So now n is one, right? Okay, now we're done with you know that block of statements. Again, we go back to the while and we say, okay, is one greater than zero? Okay, well that's true again. So we go into our statements again. So we're printing one and then again, well, n equals n minus one. So we're setting n to one minus one, which is zero. So when we come back up to this while loop, the statement, we're checking, okay, is zero greater than zero? Hmm, that's not true this time. So we don't do any of this stuff down here. And in fact, we are done with this loop. Once that becomes false, we're done with the loop. So the last thing that we have left is to print go. So down here, I print go. So our output becomes three, two, one, go. Now let's see that in action. Okay, so if I have n equals three and I say while n is greater than zero, I'm going to print n and then I'm going to set n equal to n minus one. So I'm basically just subtracting one each time. And then at the very end, I'm going to print go. Okay, if I run this, then I get three, two, one, go. So you can actually kind of read this while statement as if it were English. So in this specific context, you can say, okay, while n is greater than zero, then display this value of n and then subtract one from n and when you get to zero, then we're going to print go. So we do have to be careful when we use while loops. Take a second here and think about why do we have to be careful? Again, and again, and again, and again forever. Well, what would happen if I did something like this? While true, print, Hello world. Hmm. What would happen here? Well, true is always going to be true basically forever. Well, not basically, it is going to be true forever, right? So if that's true forever, then when do we ever stop printing hello world? We don't, right? And again forever. And our computer will go crazy like Dormammu. So in this case, it's actually pretty easy to tell that this will become what's known as an infinite loop. 
So sometimes it's actually fairly straightforward to tell if something's going to be an infinite loop, but other times it's not. So for example, if I have n equals 27 and I say while, you know, n does not equal 1, I'm going to print n. And within, you know, the block of code underneath a loop, you can have other valid code. So let me say like, let me put a conditional in here. So if n uh, is even, so this, if the remainder divided by two is zero, then I'm going to just divide n in half and set the new n equal to that value. And otherwise, so basically n is odd here and here n is even. So otherwise we're going to do n equals n times three plus one. Okay. So is it obvious to you that in this specific case, we, you know, this, this never ends? Not so obvious, right? Because n is sometimes increasing and sometimes decreasing. And there are actually certain values of n where the program will terminate. So it will sometimes become one, but we can't prove that this actually ends for all positive values of n. And this is actually some famous example that I took from one of MIT's notes. But basically the warning here is that infinite loops are not always as simple as, you know, while true. So you have to be careful when you use while loops, you need to make sure that there's a termination condition. You need to make sure that there will be an end if you start this loop, otherwise you will drive your computer crazy. In this lesson, we learned about for loops and while loops and how to use each one. Now in the next class, what we're going to be talking about is examples of each and why you might want to use a loop or what is a practical application of a loop. So stay tuned. By the way, make sure you guys check out the Discord server where you can interact with other students and ask questions and also check out the notes that are linked below. Good luck.